It's Madden NFL 23, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns under the lights on Monday night. We are just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Boswell and off we go from Cleveland and he opts to not bring this one out the first drive will start at the 25 so here come the Browns for their first drive on offense bringing this crew out it's someone known for his big arm since he entered the league back in 2016 Jacoby Brissett he spent the early years of his career bouncing between starter and backup as needed played well but never had a team fully commit to him as their guy he does retain the toolbox that made him projectable as a starter. Big, strong player with a powerful arm, deceptively mobile, and tough to tackle. The best part about his game, leadership, and being a great teammate. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. The last run got six, now second and four. Here's Brissett. Escaping the pressure right. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. The safety, Terrell Edmonds, picks it. Brandon, I wonder if someone's down there checking out the head coach right now because he might be in a little bit of shock after what just transpired. Instead of a lengthy opening drive to deal with, his guy stepped up and stole that drive away. Momentum on their side now. How will they attack on offense? Here come the Steelers for the first time in this game with their free agent signing at quarterback, the former number two overall pick, Mitchell Trubisky. Mitchell Trubisky is getting his second chance to start in the NFL, and we'll be with another story franchise, this time the Pittsburgh Steelers. He slowly fell out of favor in Chicago after making a Pro Bowl in his second season. But what a lot of people don't realize is that he had a winning record as a starter in each of his last three years with the Bears. He convinced a lot of people as a backup in Buffalo, including Pittsburgh, that there's still something to be unlocked in him as a starter. And they get to him quickly here as he stops right around the 13. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now here's another carry for Harris. And power running here down to the six-yard line. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. Now come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. This is caught. And the Steelers are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. Well, only their first drive, Charles, but they talked to us about needing to convert on third down, in particular not letting third and short opportunities slip through their fingers. Well, they were successful right there. It also tells you that they're successful on first and second down as well to get to third and manageable and make them able to pick up those first downs. Now here we are, first and goal. They've got to like what they're doing on this trip. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Steelers take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite. 
but the blocks were made up front. Offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. From his end zone, it's Demetri Felton. And he returns this to the 22. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And through an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Throwing again, Brissett on second and ten. This complete to David Bell. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11-yard pickup. It's easy to get caught up in 40 times of measurements, but when I watched David Bell play at Purdue, all I saw was an absolute playmaker. Named the conference's best receiver last year and twice went over 1,000 yards as a Boilermaker. This is a guy you've always got to watch out for, and he knows how to move the sticks. Picks up a nice first down right there. First carry for Nick Chubb. And this defense able to plug him up there as he'll get a yard to the 35. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Throwing for Sam. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Chubb on the counter. And some space here. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. 32 yards for Nick Chubb. And the Browns are an extra point away from evening this one up. A pretty well-executed run. They were telling us yesterday, Charles, they were hoping to get everybody in sync, the line, the backs, and everybody looked in sync on that play. They were in sync, and the field tilted. And that's when we get the term running downhill because when you've got that kind of momentum and everyone's doing it properly as you just described, it does feel like they are coming from downhill to you as a defender, and that is really hard to stop. Extra point by York is up and good. And we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fields it right around the goal line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. As the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. 
His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll try the right side with Harris. And taken down just shy of the 40. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 22 yards there, a first down. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Kevin Stefanski consulted with his guys above, and they've told him, throw that challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because it didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. decision to throw the flag. Yeah, it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Now Trubisky. Going for the deep ball. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, the crowd doesn't like that. Was going to bring up fourth. Now oh, it's man, first. <laughs> they don't like it at all, do they? It brings them back into it, but really not in a positive way. Now they're angry. That can jangle a team a little bit as well. Pass interference ruined that series of downs for them. Harris running straight ahead. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seventh. 157 to go in this first half on EA Sports. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. On the draw, it's Harris. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. Boswell's kick is good, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Here comes Felton to bring it out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. There was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. But there's an incompletion, partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. To throw once more on second and ten. Brissett swings this out for Hunt. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Third and short yardage, Brissett. Another completion here to Hunt. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Brissett. Oh. 
forced down. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. That's Cameron Hayward who got in there to take him down. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. And it's a fumble. But I think a Brown was able to recover, and they'll indeed hold on to the ball here. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. This time they stay on the ground. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half for the Steelers. And even though they've got the lead, they're likely going over ways they can improve the running game as they didn't find a whole lot of success in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Browns, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. Final adjustments being made in the locker room. We're just about set for the second half from Cleveland. And to bring it your way, we go back up to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. And the Steeler offense ready to get going here in this third quarter. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Harris starts the drive on the ground. Taven Bryan with a nice play defensively. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Call it no gain there and it brings forth a third and long. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, this is the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Well, that's where this Cleveland crowd, the dog pound in particular, make it difficult on opposing offenses. It looked like they might have had troubles communicating at the line, and it leads to the incompletion. The Steelers send out their punter now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. 
I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on a punt for the first time tonight. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. First and 10 here for Trubisky and the Steelers at their own 17-yard line. Harris will start the drive out. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually... He's got a man complete! And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A gain there of 30 big ones. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Now a first down carry for Harris. 42 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 11. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris with his second touchdown of the night. And the Steelers are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. But that makes this a two-score ball game. And you know, the way this thing has been going, Charles, two scores kind of feels like three or four scores. Yeah, that's a great observation. It's been a heck of a battle, hasn't it? And points have been at a premium throughout this game. So you have to wonder, is this going to be too much for them to overcome? As well for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Chris Boswell, the kickoff point 
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. So now the Browns down by 10. And time, a huge factor. Their offense has struggled all night, and now they need to find two scores late to try to pull this thing out. A first down throw for Brissett. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. And he loses the football a second time. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. On the give, this is Harris. Uses the stiff arm. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll run with Harris. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and 10. They run with Harris. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They got to get to the 23 here on third. They run again with Harris. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. Boswell's kick is good, and that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to so they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. And now the attention, it turns to the Browns. Trailing in this one now. Just over a minute, 40 to play. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. Now Brissett. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Brissett. Finding Hunt. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Brissett. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now. Because I think they're going to try and get several plays up in quick succession if they can. Reset to throw on first. He's going to dump this off to his running back. And oh my goodness, he loses it again. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Well, that drive wasn't a case of wanting to put points on the board. It was needing they to, had to had having to, to, and they didn't get it done. Yeah, didn't get it done. And now you look at the situation and the point differential, two scores, pretty much game, set, match. How about the takeaway, though, huh? How about those defensive guys? Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. 
and give the tackle to Anthony Walker. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Harris. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Ten yards is the pickup there, and that should just about put a bow on this one. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett in there to make the sack on what will be the final act in this ball game. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.